going to be assembling a uh, Tempo pedal board and I've got my chocks power supply and that can be mounted to this um, bracket and choose to put it wherever you want. I will decide that later on. It might even, I might even want to move it up that end uh, or down this end, I don't know yet. My first thing to do is to uh, install this power supply. So I knocked off the little piece that covers that. You would have to unscrew it first. There are two tiny screws and then tap it with a, a mallet as the powder coat is kind of holding it together a little bit. And it comes with a long screwdriver so you can reach back there but it's a little it looks a little awkward to reach so I think I'm going to start by just taking the side panel off. The side removed easily by unscrewing the two feet and then taking one of these wrenches and unscrewing the handle, just a, a curved Phillips uh, screwdriver. Now we'll see that we have uh, an easy uh, sighting to screw this in. I, it appears like the two that I removed are slightly shorter in length than the two that came with it, so I will be using the two that came with it and uh, putting a tiny bit of blue treadlock compound. I really don't want this to uh, ever come apart. And then when we plug into this, it'll be firmly held. And there is step one. So Temple Audio has this uh, buffer. Um, so um, we'll install that into this side. Again, I'll, it comes with two screws. I'll compare its length. These appear to have blue treadlock compound right on them. So that's good. Um, I'll certainly take this off for now. I'm not sure if mounting this on now will be wise or mounting this plate back on and then mounting it would be better because that way maybe I can uh, access the handle uh, screws better by not mounting this on right now. I'll just take this and uh, tap it in. So there goes the panel there. This will, you know, mount this way. I think where this the handle goes, it'll be kind of right in the way, so I will mount that after. So back to positioning this. Now we'll put in uh, two screws. That mounts this part of the board. I'm getting ready to install a set of LED lights and uh, the idea is just to wipe the area down with this alcohol pad that they gave. And certainly we should let it dry. When we install the lights, I don't think it really matters uh, where this is facing this way or this way as long as the lights are attached to the bottom. Maybe I'll attach it this way as my power supply has four on the side and three on the side so maybe that'll work uh, well that way. And when it, and it comes with a cable tie and certainly tells you not to cable tie over this part of it. You would just cable tie here so as we unpeel this red um, 3M stuff and stick it um, later on we will cable tie that end of the of the lights. Also, um, I'm going to kind of center the lights by counting three holes here, three holes there. Uh, that seems nice and dry as I view it here. And let's just take this. Um, I might have to cut that out. There we are. Oh, that's going to look pretty good there. And that should be fairly even. We're kind of right on the three dot thing. So I'm going to start sticking it down to what might appear to be 
um, a straight line. And for now, I'm just going to hold it with tape. And uh, that will be our light strip. A 9 volt light strip is 200 milliamps at 9 volts. Um, seems to be sticking well. The next step in the process is take some of my old pedals and make sure I've removed the batteries out of them and, and any uh, Velcro. <clears throat> and uh, I'll have to remove these labels because with this system here we have these pads that we would take the sticky part off, stick it to a clean surface, and uh, these four little corner posts correspond to holes on the board, and then from the back side, you would just take this thumb screw and screw it through the board, and it holds firmly that way. Uh, three different sizes exist in these, some for small pedals and some for a larger one for big pedals. Um, so that's the process now, kind of cleaning off, making sure the batteries are out and cleaning off the bottom side of the, of the pedals of, of their Velcro or whatever I might have had on. Um, this one here has less of a perfect surface, but we'll see what happens there because the, the way to open it is right through the mid back, unless I put a small one here and a small one there. That's an option too. Um, and then some of these, the labels to remove. Tiny label there. This one I think is free and clear. No, I guess I got the feet to remove on this one. Um, and also, I'm using lava cable, uh, uh, ultramafic solid uh, with tightrope, lava tightrope plugs. And certainly, um, this Kali attaches on the, on the top side. The Zen drive on each side. This one can go snug because it attaches on the um, front top side. And then, of course, you know, these ones attach here. So I'll have to kind of figure out how that's going to work, if it's going to work. Um, one way would be this way, I guess, just to, to move them um, slightly off that way. And then that gives me room. Um, even up further. I'll figure it out, I guess, and uh, see if I can make this all work. This is what I've decided upon for my pedal board. I would have liked the Morning Glory. I use it a lot in the front row, but um, with the lava cable plugs, which are not very uh, um, deep, um, there was still no room to really make it all happen comfortably, I guess. And here I use the, Zen, uh, the Ghost Drive a fair bit too. Um, and then the Tone Burst I use for my boost. Um, the Red Remote is going to be attached to this one as it has two gain stages and you could toggle between them or you can put switch between them, which is easier on the go on the fly. Um, but I think being a taller pedal than some of these, it's going to work out just fine being in the middle and the back like that. I think it'll stomp easy. This one here will stomp easy. It's a very tall one as well. Plus uh, barefoot buttons. I might just get those and put them on top and they'll be just easier to, to stomp on. And this one here is quite low. I don't turn it on much. I often leave it on a mild chorusing. And, and, uh, but it, I think there are tall barefoot buttons that I could put on there and easily reach the back row that way. This would be the one that I would reach the most. But this was my biggest concern. But I think it'll, they'll all reach very well. This one here is sticking out about an eighth of an inch beyond the red casing here. So I don't have my hard shell case yet, um, but I think an eighth of an inch, uh, the foam should pack easily. And with these lava cable um, buttons, I wanna make sure that they're not sticking out too far in the back side, as well as the um, nine volt connectors. I wanna make sure they're gonna be fine. This one here, I'm starting very close, so um, one of the uh, 
pads here didn't quite fit, so I took it on the belt sander and just shaved the aluminum down a tiny bit, so now it can be right against it, and I can take that right close. I'll take my uh, lava cable, bring it through there, and along the front uh, that way. So, you know, it's kind of a rather tight setup, but I think it'll actually work out fine for me. So we'll get to attaching the pedals. We'll start, I'll use two for this one, just a regular medium one and a small. I may also for this one too, as it might rock, or two mediums, I have another medium. Um, and I'm gonna attach this one as close to the side as possible. Like I said, we'll use some lava cable and the lava cable will go through there and into the, into the side. And this will only extend an eighth of an inch beyond the edge of that, so I think it'll be fine. So this has been cleaned off and now we put the pedal back to where we had it with this tight against the uh, side rail and you can use the, uh, the dots uh, to line it up. And eventually, you know, it's just attached to the back of the pedal. And later on, we go from the underside and attach it to the pedal board with just a thumb screw. So that's how that works. And now, yeah, that attaches perfectly. So that should go nowhere. Brilliant. Uh, this one's been cleaned off too. Again, let's try to find our spacing. And uh, I can allow a tiny bit of room on this one. And maybe somewhere like that will be fine. So here's a, la Oops. Here's a large pad. And I'm going to bring it right to the edge of the pedal board. Seems okay. And now we've got that attached. This is a Stu Mac offering that uh, really sounds quite wonderful. Well, I'm very happy with that Ghost Drive. It's a Klon clone. I'm going to leave these two for now and just. Uh, I might just leave a slight row of dots there, of uh, holes, perforated holes. And uh, because this one goes out a bit, I'll, I might leave it a sixteenth of an inch overhanging. And that would be good for the um, Petrucci pedal there too. So let's kind of eyeball that. That might be pretty good, and that actually is perfect. So, again, when we press here, it's fine. If we were really pressing there, I suppose it would rock, um, but that's not going to happen, so it's going to be perfect. Um, we could put another small one there. I may yet. At least it's lined up. Now I can put the tone burst in. And then, of course, this little red remote can find its way basically right in the middle of those two. And that should work out just great. So if you first had put them on centered it, that wouldn't be exactly where you are. So the right way to do it is to put this little pad on the board like we did. And then uh, you can find it. It's, see how this one's not centered at all on here, but it lines it up just like we want it on there. So that's the first row done. Yeah, that should work out good. Feet had to come off. Uh, those screws won't be in the way at all. And so now the Cali 76 stacked edition. Um, it's 
ready to be installed. There we are. Now, this one may be a bit of trouble. <laughs> as it has a sticker there that's recessed, it has this that's recessed, it has that area that's recessed. Um, this one won't be so bad, it'll be easy to, so I'll you save that one for last. And it has to be as close as possible for the uh, lava connector to work. Uh, the nice part about this is that they're just not stuck um, and me having to un-velcro them to have to put the lava connectors, so that'll be easy. Um, connecting the lava stuff because um, you can take it out with just a thumb screw and put it exactly back where it was so that part of the build will will be great now yeah a matter of uh, putting that morning glory that I like a lot let's see about this plate Maybe I've got it a little too close to the... Ooh, these are strong. Let's see if I can unstick it. If not, we will leave it. Unsticking is doable. different direction there and as you can see these really do hold I have no idea yet how we undo it in years to come if we want to just change it up or we keep buying temple boards and although they won't they won't always line up with the next board you may build um, but there must be a, maybe a way of just heating them off um, that is a question maybe you guys could answer. So now, maybe the most challenging one of them all. Let's see about where the dreamscape will, uh, how it'll attach. And the halo, the Andy Timmons halo, and the, uh, in Andy Apple Red, uh, and the dreamscape will be through the effects loop, and all the rest will be uh, in the front of the amp. So as we saw with this one and how it, it quickly grabbed a lot, I'm going to be less concerned with these indentations uh, um, with this. Uh, I'm just going to stick it where it's supposed to be. I can't remember what this pedal board is for width, maybe eight and a half inches, I think. Here's a six inch rule, so six, seven, yeah, I think it is eight and a half. So. Um, obviously, for some pedals, you can, you know, it's, it's, I just wanted a small board for um, small locations, but um, obviously, I'm allowed to put a fair bit of stuff on this. So it'll be quite something and, and small in space because this is 18 inches, I think, from end to end. So on the perforated, you know, the black part of it, it's, it's even less, 16 and 3 quarters, I think, if I recall. So let's stick this one. hold it this way and I'll bring it basically right where I need it. I'll line it with the holes on the top. Have it pretty much snug with that one, allowing good room there. And let's really push this one in. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I think that one's a great uh, Hold, it'll hold well. So basically one uh, one pad for every pedal. For the, some reason this first Zen Drive uh, I chose to. Um, maybe where it was teetering off the edge there I thought well, maybe if we attach it firmly it'll be fine but I don't think I don't think they're gonna go anywhere once they're firmly attached. Um, like I said as long as it's mostly towards the direction of the button, it should be fine. As I place the pedal board on the floor to just feel it out, certainly this one's harder to reach to, and luckily I don't uh, reach to it sometimes all night long, just leave the soft coursing on there. Um, 
but this one here did rock a bit, so I will uh, take one of the small ones that I had. What's it gonna hurt, right? It'll just stabilize it. And uh, I'll, I'll place it on there. And uh, that will stabilize it a lot. And I'll just push it on there. And uh, there we are. Now running from the effects loop, uh, I'll put it in the two effects in loop B, um, all the way to the chorus. Now which route shall we take to get to the chorus? It looks like if I take this apart, I might be wise just to go right through there. chorus in mono. And I'll attach that. And so there is the line to um, in mono of the chorus from what we have is two effects. Two effects heading to the effects in and then out, again, we'll return to from effects. So in the 4X mod that we installed, there are little dip switches here. And uh, certainly the first one, auto, um, auto loop, if we enable it uh, down there, that means that if I someday have an amp that doesn't have an effects loop and I don't plug two cables in there, it'll automatically route the uh, chorus and the echo to the front of the amp. So that's kind of a neat little feature there too. Plus it has buffers. So there's in and you know to and from buffers for one, two, three, and four. So uh, that's kind of neat too. So if I feel I'm losing some of my highs, I can engage the buffers and see how they sound along the way. The uh, output of the chorus into the mono input of this um, halo drive will not go under the board. We'll just run it from here to there over the board. It will be perfect. So a simple just over the board connection on that one. And uh, I'm basically uh, out of long runs of lava cable. We had about six and a half feet um, going to in front of the amp. And uh, so far I have, you know, I don't know, 16 inches or so going to here and then a couple of inches going here. So we'll need another run from here going back under. And so I've got more lava cable ordered. Um, and I think what I'll do is just assemble it here. I might pass it through one of the tiny holes uh, here, as there are no uh, big you know, cable holes in this area. I might just kind of pass it through and build the cable here and, and then run it all the way back to where it says from effects. Here I'm gonna put my Chox power supply in. It's a seven um, outlet power supply. Um, what we're gonna do, uh, I'll start with showing you the other side. There are seven pedals and there are seven uh, outputs here. But there's also the buffer and the lights. So that's nine outputs I'm going to need. So what I decided to do was to um, daisy chain, and they offer a daisy chain with this, the uh, tone burst and the ghost drive and the Zen drive. The tone burst only has 15 milli, uh, current has a current draw of 15 milliamps, 23.5 and 25. So together they only have you know less than 65 milliamps of current draw. Draw, and the rest you know the this one at 18 volts will have 108. This one will have um, current draw of 43 milliamps. Um, this one at 100 milliamps and the Keeley 
uh, halo at 160. The lights will take up 200 milliamps and the 4X mod um, buffer will take up um, 68 milliamps or draw 68 milliamps. So going back to the back side, I've labeled some of them. And so the Cali 76, we're gonna use these dip switches to uh, make 18 volts. So if the two dip switches are up, we have 18 volts and a current draw of 330 where this one's only 108 so it's going to work out perfectly. Plenty of room for that. So we'll plug it in. Um, we'll cable tie these later. Uh, for now I just want to see if everything works. So the Cali 76 will be in the one that we have for 18 volts. All the rest are at 9, so everything will be the two dip switches down, uh, except for this one, and it might be nice to uh, label it, so that's what I'm going to do now. And uh, that way we won't fry any other pedal by plugging it into the 18 volt one. So there's the 18 volts. And we'll just maybe plug this right in the middle. So on this side, we'll have the ghost drive, Zen drive, um, tone burst, um, daisy chain there, and maybe the morning glory on the front side. So uh, I guess basically all front of amp uh, powers, power supply stuff will go there. And uh, then on the back side, we'll put the Keeley Halo, and we'll put the Dreamscape, and on the other two, we'll have the 4X mod that's plugged right into there, and uh, then the lights. We're going to do an ultramathic cable here, um, a tightrope cable, where we'll mark off a centimeter. And with a number 10 um, wire gauge stripper, we shall take the uh, outer coating, the jacket, and uh, just move all the shielding wire off to the side and twist it up. And again, that should be basically a centimeter. I'm going to cut a tiny bit of it off here so it doesn't fall on my workbench, but we've got a centimeter of um, shielding, so we fold that off to the side. After that, we need to cut, and um, we'll be using number 20 wire gauge, and take it close to two uh, millimeters from that purple jacket. So, when we measure that new exposed black part, there's about two uh, millimeters. After that, we need to cut this part to four cent millimeters. So, at that point, I'll just mark it with a marker and cut it off. So, from the black part on, four millimeters. After this, we take an X-Acto knife, we'll cut into this black um, shielding, because we don't want it there, it's conductive. So if we take it away from the lead as much as possible, um, this will be how it works. So taking away that black layer, exposing just that white, I'll measure again, we're two millimeters, we're four millimeters. So in pushing the uh, plug into it, uh, some have said that when you push, it, it pushes this um, center solid lead um, down. So some have just kind of taken and, and wrapped that around, make a, a bend. And as you push this in, it's less likely to, uh, to, to push that center core. So eye it up, see that it's centered, push it in, you should hear a snap. There, I 
I certainly heard it. I don't know if you could hear it on there, but there is a little click. And then just turn it a bit, um, bend it, um, attach this end. Sometimes I take soft pliers and just do the last little bit and that should uh, get it there. Again, what we will do is take it down to two millimeters. Um, there we are. And now we will take the center core at four millimeters. Cut that off. Don't forget the jacket where that little black conductive part should strip off fairly easy. I missed a wire in this twist, I guess. Again, fold it down. Push this end in. Did not hear a click. Let's try it again. Yeah, there it did. Uh, turn it a bit. Quarter turn, half a turn. Bend it. Um, you can bend it pretty easy because it's solid core, so you don't have to really focus on exactly where you bend, but... Um, Put this on. Oh, yeah, there we are. Tighten it up. Um, sometimes just use this for leverage, and there is the cable. We'll check it. So, in checking it, uh, we'll just plug it into a cable tester. Um, there it indicates the sleeve is connected well on both, and that the tip is connected well on both. If you uh, don't have a cable connector, but you have one of these, um, put it on 20k ohms. Touch the two tips, for instance, um, and we should have a reading of basically zero. So zero is good. Touch the two sleeves and uh, should do the same. So we're at there again, perfect connection with this cable. I'm making use of some of these barefoot buttons, not so much because I play barefoot or in socks, but basically to raise the height of the back row. Um, they come in these small ones, like I have black here or this green one, or um, different sizes uh, for different heights, different um, diameters. So, and the back row here, I guess, um, Essentially, I kind of wanted them to all be around the same height, so you know we're we're pretty close there. That one had to be a really tall one because it was really low, so that'll help me kind of reach and switch it now. Uh, this one here had to be big bore for the Cali uh, 76. Uh, as you can tell, there's a tiny bit of play, but in these ones, there's a lot of play, and and then this halo, there's a a lot more play so you know there's three different sizes of buttons or switches on this uh, board where this big bore one will fit perfectly there so I'll get the set screws in and we'll screw it tight so I'll uh, screw the set screws in three of them if you attach just like your Christmas tree and that is it, firmly attached. We'll mount the jack part onto this punch plate by sending it through, lining up the holes. You will see that there's a, um, a bevel, I guess, in that part of the, of the punch, of the jack plate that will send the screw flat uh, against its uh, plate, I guess. So, 
let's continue on. So now we have that. I think I will mount it so that this symbol side of the USB will be up. And so that means this way. I now have that down, so I will turn it around and this will be how I will mount it. So now I got the USB uh, port on this side of the board screwed in and um, again with the symbol up uh, you could just charge your tuner or your iPad or whatever you want right from your board. I'm coming along with my connections here and I've got some uh, ties kind of loosely attached here so you know not crazy snug the wires can still go through um, and I've got notes on here saying that you know that one's heading to the Cali this one's returning from the tone burst and uh, I ran out of uh, tape for my printer but the order which they're in except for the effects loop ones but the Cali to the Zen drive to the JHS to the ghost drive to the tone burst. Um, this one here that's returning from the tone burst I kind of left you know on its own heading out heading out there um, and as it goes to the tone burst um, occasionally I will use uh, especially when we play Dreams by uh, Fleetwood Mac I'll use a um, volume pedal so I'll usually use the volume pedal after the tone burst and then attach it with another cable back to here so I'll I'll undo this one and just attach you know a pedal off to the side um, but otherwise this is the pedal board as is now we just got to figure out kind of how to more neatly attach the um, uh, power cables and uh, I think I'm going to put the um, shocks somewhere in that vicinity that way a lot of the um, little screws can be accessed and it won't be in the way. The cable I have to the USB, I could only get a six foot cable, the one foot cable wasn't in stock so I'm going to try to find a neat place to to tuck it in there. Uh, continuing on with the wiring, it's said that uh, our power cable shouldn't really run along with the um, audio cables but um, sometimes there's no um, choice there but if you can make them kind of cross at a at a right angle as it will here um, it's preferred and even here we're not we're still an inch away or so so uh, it's not so bad so this is kind of taking shape quite nicely here and the rest of the um, power cables will head on down again they'll cross uh, or not even intersect at all, but they'll intersect in some places. So not running with them, but kind of separately from them. And uh, uh, that's coming along great. So I've got the pedal board completed. Um, nice little board. Doesn't take too much space for where I need it to go. Uh, our small little clubs now that we play it, and the uh, four cables, and then the power on off and cord. So loop A, loop B. And on this side, a newly installed USB port. So if I need to charge anything, that'll be pretty simple that way. I don't have to. Um, go underneath and try to get into that. So the underside, neat and tidy. Um, the power cables basically crossing those there. I wasn't getting any trouble anyway, uh, even though I was playing it without it being completed. light strip you can see from there.
a sturdy little pedal board and you can see you know it's not a very big pedal board this is my hand and so you know it's it's not a big pedal board but we managed to get basically seven effects plus a switch for this one the case is really quite nice too the hard shell case it's got this custom fit for the board um, and provides enough room for some cables cords uh, just to shove in there and this perfectly fits um, and levels off as those sections are cut lower here and higher there so a perfect fit and very safe storage here are some of the colors we have with these lights from purple to blue to yellow maybe even a darker blue what was that one yeah I guess a light blue darker blue a green red and a white